Soundstripe recently announced their free plugin for Adobe Premiere Pro, which is exciting because that means you no longer need to leave the program to license and import tracks into your timeline when working on a project. I'm going to show you how to install the plugin and a couple ways to maybe incorporate it into your workflow. Now, I don't know if I need to say this, but this video isn't sponsored by Soundstripe. However, I am an affiliate of Soundstripe. Okay, first, let's take a look at some of the features of the Soundstripe plugin, which are coming straight from their blog post, which is linked below, or the release video video, which is right up here, or that's also linked down below. Here's some of the features. You have access to the full Soundstripe library of music and sound effects. In two clicks, you can license and import the tracks directly into the project bin or timeline. Now this is a cool one. In one click, you can import a song preview. There's an audio player integration that allows you to sync the Soundstripe audio player with your timeline. And finally, with intelligent track swapping, song previews are automatically swapped out with the high res file when you hit that license button. All right, let's get it installed. The plugin is going to be found at Adobe Exchange, which is linked below, or use the Soundstripe blog post to get there. You want to make sure you're logged into your Adobe account before you start the process because the plugin is going to automatically sync to your account. Another thing, you're going to want to make sure your Premiere Pro is updated to at least Premiere Pro 2018 12.0. If you constantly run updates, then you should be good to go. Then all you're going to do is hit the free button and install it. Like I said, it will automatically sync to your Adobe Creative Cloud account and be ready to use. So let's open up Premiere. So once you have Premiere Pro up and running, go all the way up to the Window tab and find Extensions, and then to Soundstripe. Open it up and there it is. For some, it might open up in a panel, which works either way. You can either take this window and drop it in the panel, or if it's already there, you can undock it and create this window, whatever is easiest for your workflow. In the editing workspace in Premiere, I actually like it right up here in the source panel. I don't know why, it just feels right, I guess. You'll want to make sure to log into Soundstripe to have full access. If you don't have a Soundstripe account, I've put my affiliate link down below where you can use the code Hoover Heights to get 10% off. And it helps me out too, you know? So when you're logged in, you're gonna have access like it's the full web version. If you're familiar with the website, this will look pretty natural to you. You'll be able to shuffle through the home page with new artists and recently added songs, wander through the playlist tab that has staff picks and already created playlists to find something that might fit your video's vibe. Hit the Songs tab and you can filter the songs by all these different categories here on the side. You have full access to the Sound Effects tab and Filter categories. And also, just like on the full web version, you have access to the My Music tab, which has things like your personal created playlists and recently licensed songs. And right from this plugin, you can favorite tracks and create your custom playlists. Now that you know your way around, let's take a look at the settings, where some of these features we talked about kick in. The first option is syncing playback to the timeline. That means when you sample a track and hit the play button, wherever your playhead is on your timeline, it's going to start playing back to you, like this. The second option is to create a new audio track on import. So that just means it's going to create a new audio track in your timeline. So if you have other tracks like voice tracks or sound effects, it won't interfere with any of those. The last option is the directory, which I think defaults to the documents folder. So if you want those tracks going somewhere else, just use the change directory button. The last thing I want to show you is the preview import and the track swapping feature. So if you're looking to cut using the track but don't want to commit to a certain track, just hit this button here to import a watermarked track. It's going to import it where the playhead is on your timeline. So make sure that's in place. Make your cuts to that, and then when you're ready to commit, just hit the license button, which will take you through the licensing info and project type. I personally like working with WAV files. When the track is licensed, it's going to automatically replace the watermark track in your timeline makes workflow so much easier. If you're using Soundstripe and have other suggestions on using the plugin, comment those below. If you're not using Soundstripe but think it'd be something that would benefit your workflow, use the link I have below to sign up and use the code Hoover Heights to get 10% off your subscription. Man, it'd be cool if you hit that subscribe button, the bell, and watch for some new videos in the near future. You guys are great. Thanks for watching.